What's up guys, welcome to your 12th 3D's Studio Max tutorial and in this tutorial I'm going to show you guys how to create 2D shapes. Now you're probably wondering why we're creating 2D shapes instead of 3D shapes because this is a way with creating 2D shapes. You can turn a 2D shape into a 3D shape really easy. But first we need to know the ins and outs of 2D. And also when you're working with like flat surfaces like a wall or something, then you probably want to put some 2D images on that. But for now, we're going to learn how to create shapes and later we're going to learn how to create them into 3D objects. And this is a pretty advanced way of doing it, so pay attention. So to create standard shapes, go to your create palette right here and instead of geometry, go to shapes. And what this allows you to do is to create all different kinds of shapes. Now you probably already know the basics like circle, donut, all of these. The only probably probably one you don't know is this n-gon. And this is pretty much a polygon with any number of sides you want on it. So go ahead and click n-gon and with the sides, click 8 to turn it to an octagon. Now you can go ahead and create a shape just by clicking and dragging just like we did before. And I'm actually going to go to my top view so it's easier to see. And I'm going to turn off my grid so it's probably a lot easier to see now. So again, anytime you want to create a shape, just go click on the shape and drag. Now another point is if I select this and delete it, is whenever you're creating a shape, you get this little checkbox that either says start new shape or don't start new shape. Whenever this is checked, anytime you create a shape you can see that they're different colors and I can modify these differently and they don't affect each other but let me go ahead and select all of these and delete them and now when you click like something like circle and click don't start new shape or uncheck that what it does is it turns it into all one shape so now you can see that they're all the same color when created so if I click away from that, you can see that this is all entirely one shape. I never started a new shape. So now I can edit all that as a whole by either just moving it like this or doing whatever I want to it. So aside from that, let's go ahead and delete this and move on. Aside from that, what we can do is the probably only other shape you're going to have confusion on is this line right here this line is pretty much like the pen tool in Photoshop you go ahead and click a point and then click another point to create a line and you can keep clicking to create more and more lines the thing is whenever you click and drag it creates a round bezier point so click and drag creates a round point and if you go back to your beginning and click it says close the spline go ahead and click yes and you got yourself an entire shape so that's the basics of using the line tool let me go ahead and delete that now in order to make these shapes a spline we need to convert them to an editable spline so I'm gonna go ahead and make what should I make how about a star and right there and I'm also gonna make a circle right here and I'm gonna pause this while I remember I can't right click on my computer or my screen recorder or mess up I'm gonna pause these right click these and convert them to an editable spline and you should know how to do that from last tutorial so I'll see you in a second alright guys now I converted this star in the circle to an editable spline so now that we have two editable splines instead of just regular shapes I can go ahead and teach you guys something about these now the first thing I want to point out is if I try to render these items go ahead and I'll hit click away and hit F okay well evidently when I hit F9 on my keyboard it stops my screen recorder so I do that but anyways what I want to show you is if you try to render these out you're not going to be able to render it unless you go to rendering right here and enable and renderer right there so click that I guys I can't show you what it does so I guess you're just gonna have to see for yourself uh, if I try to show you my screen recorder will shut off so sucks for you so now another thing I want to talk about is how to create a new line most of the stuff we're gonna be working with in shapes is under this geometry so let's go ahead and select a subject object of vertex by clicking your editable spine and vertex and anytime you create a new line it's gonna add to that same shape just like that 
So that's how you can add to your shape when you're in editable um, splines by creating a new line. Another cool thing you can do is break a point to create two separate endpoints. So go ahead and let me just select the endpoint right now. You can see that this is one endpoint that just moves along. If you keep that vertex selected and click break, what it does is break it apart. So now you can see if I select it like that and break it, press the break button, it now is broken into two separate endpoints. So again, anytime you want to take a connecting vertex and break it into two endpoints, select it and hit break in your geometry and that will break it into two endpoints. Now the last thing I want to talk to you guys about is this attach button right here. What this does is take one spline and attach it to another one. So let's go ahead and select this entire spline right here or this entire object and you see the white brackets around it right there and we want to attach the circle to it so it's all one shape. Well in order to do that while this is selected go ahead and click attach and now when you hover over your circle you see this weird goofy uh, crop circle looking thing. Just go ahead and click that and now this entire circle was attached to this shape. So again in order to attach an object to another spline just go ahead and click attach with the object selected and then click the object you want to attach it to. So that's that for this tutorial. In the next tutorial we're probably going to be going over either the rest of these or how to change these 2D objects into 3D. So thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.